Hi everyone, um, my name is David. Um, I lead engineering here at Minted. Uh, and today, uh, in my session, I will be discussing how we scale uh, our image generation pipeline uh, for our complex product catalog. Uh, we'll go into some details uh, about how our compositions and transform work, um, and I'll also provide some, a holistic overview uh, of our image platform. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, what Minted does, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the brand. Uh, so Minted is a crowdsourced design marketplace. So that means we source creative content uh, from a global community of independent artists. Uh, then we sell the best of these content uh, in a form of art, home decor, uh, and stationery. Um, so uh, we sell primarily uh, to US customers, but we do uh, ship worldwide um, and our products uh, have reached over 75 million homes uh, worldwide. Um, and the way uh, the process works is that we run uh, these contests we call design challenges uh, throughout the year. So we'll host anywhere between 20 to 30 contests a year. Um, and these theme challenges will uh, be things like, hey, help us design um, the holiday card for the next holiday season, or uh, help us design uh, the save the date card for uh, the next uh, wedding season. Um, and for each of these contests, uh, we'll get a few thousand designs from uh, our artist community. Um, and then uh, the artist will have the opportunity to uh, comment uh, and critique and iterate um, on each other's work, uh, on their own work, and uh, <laughs> critique on each other's work. Um, and then um, after the, the contest submission period is closed, um, there is a voting period where uh, anybody with a minted account can uh, can vote on these designs, uh, and the um, at the and we typically get you know anywhere between one to two million votes uh, per contest. Um, at the end of the voting period, then the top voted designs uh, get turned into uh, templatized products that uh, we can uh, that customers can customize and purchase uh, on online. Um, so yeah, so a little bit more about um, uh, our business by the numbers. Um, currently, uh, within our community, we have uh, somewhere around fifteen thousand uh, artists. Uh, they come from all fifty states um, and uh, almost a hundred countries around the world. Um, at any given time, we have. Uh, around 250,000 active SKUs uh, in our catalog, uh, of which uh, roughly two thirds, uh, 150K or so, are customized uh, and configurable. Um, so on uh, the screenshot uh, I just took from our homepage, you, know, you can see some of the examples of our products. Um, we have uh, the artwork prominently featured. Um, we're currently um, you know, in the uh, in the wedding art seasons, so there's kind of more art features on uh, our main site. Uh, we have the greeting cards on the lower left, uh, and then we have the uh, the bags, the, the canvas bags that's very popular um, for as gifts for uh, for loved ones. So every year we roughly turn over around a third of our assortment a year. So we're we're launching a ton of products all the time. Um, uh, so on this slide, uh, we're showing a screenshot of uh, our art product details page. Uh, art is currently uh, the only product category um, that we have on Cloudinary, uh, but is one of the most complex and is a good example uh, of uh, the amount of configuration uh, you're allowed to, uh, to do on our products. So on the right rail of the screenshot, you see uh, all the possible options uh, you can select for a single art print. Uh, so you can select between uh, printing on paper or on canvas. Uh, you can select frame or no frame. You can select sizes. Um, you can select uh, what frame you want to uh, go with the art print, um, the border and matting, um, and so on and so forth. Um, combine that with uh, the number of images um, per variant uh, when, you, when you generate, uh, we get this huge number uh, over 360,000 uh, images are needed for uh, a single uh, a single uh, art design. Uh, now, not all the combinations are valid, so uh, the actual number is lower, but it's still a very large a very large number. 
Uh, and because Minted is a premium brand, uh, we insist that every single uh, one of our product images matches uh, the uh, selected configuration exactly. So if you pick a uh, white frame, uh, 18 by 24 art print uh, on canvas that is blue, uh, we will show that combination exactly on the hero images on the PDP. Um, so uh, all together, uh, we have uh, just shy of 60 million images on Cloudinary uh, for art alone. Um, and we have roughly um, only 4,000 art SKUs uh, currently on Cloudinary. So it's a uh, only a small fraction uh, of our total catalog. So there's a, a lot more room to, to grow there. Um, before we get into uh, discussing kind of how the current pipeline works. Uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, the historic context around you know, why we uh, decide to uh, partner with uh, Cloudinary uh, and some of the challenges that we face uh, over time. So Minted was uh, founded in late 20, uh, 2007. Um, so we are 14 um, years old this year. Um, and over time, um, kind of we've built out a lot of technology uh, to support the unique need of the business. Uh, and that definitely includes uh, image generation. So we've built up both um, the 2D and 3D capabilities to, uh, to manipulate uh, images and transform them uh, for product uh, images use. Uh, so we build a image magic based uh, composition and transform tool uh, for our 2D images. Um, and we've built a WebGL-based uh, 3D mesh rendering tool uh, for our 3D images. Uh, however, uh, over time, as our catalog grew in complexity, um, these tool and pipeline uh, grew in complexity with it. Um, and what you end up with is uh, a mix of old and new tools and scripts strung together uh, with different you know, streaming technology, queuing systems, uh, and the whole thing was just very complicated. Now, it was really hard to maintain. Uh, it was taking out significant engineering resources. Um, and you know, we generally, we, uh, <laughs> we don't want to deal with it. Um, and because of that complexity, um, the uh, latency ended up uh, under, under optimized for various bottlenecks. Uh, and these bottlenecks meant that uh, it would sometimes take weeks to launch a new R assortment which uh, really kind of impacted our ability to stay nimble and move fast uh, with, uh, with our business. Um, there was also stability issues. Uh, we had race conditions uh, and various kind of tricky to debug uh, hardware configuration issues uh, that was causing the pipeline to be uh, unstable. So all those uh, together combined uh, with the fact that there's uh, limited visibility into uh, the pipeline we built uh, meant that um, uh, you know from time to time we'll get broken images uh, making their way into the production site, which is uh, embarrassing for a, a premium brand uh, like Minted. So uh, that moves us to uh, what we are currently uh, with Cloudinary, uh, focusing on art uh, specifically. So there are several um, sections to uh, this high level diagram. Uh, on the slide, um, and we can go through them in a little bit of detail each. Um, so at the top, you have uh, the scene generation process uh, for uh, for an image. So uh, we will have a photo shoot in our studios uh, for um, the scenes uh, that we want to composite uh, for the final image. Um, and these will be kind of set up exactly um, how uh, we wanted to show up on the final image, uh, except for uh, the art print itself, there's a blank canvas uh, in this place. Um, after the shoot completes, um, a image specialist then uh, takes these images into Photoshop, uh, slides them into layers, um, and position the layers uh, uh, exactly how um, they need to uh, look. Um, and then we have a script that generates uh, the uh, the coordinates uh, needed to position the uh, these layers uh, uh, into a text file. Um, so then this CSV uh, file is then uploaded to Cloudinary uh, combined with uh, the sliced up image layers that uh, was previously created. 
So with those two pieces in place, uh, we're now ready to combine them with uh, the actual design to create the final image. Um, so uh, the middle uh, lane here on the, uh, on the diagram uh, shows how uh, the artist would submit um, the design files to us. Uh, these are generally il illustrator files uh, combined with static images uh, used in these designs. Um, they are ingested into um, our secret sauce dark magic um, component that spits out uh, a bunch of output needed for uh, various use cases. Um, the, uh, the most relevant uh, for this presentation is uh, the base design image. So the base design image is the design itself uh, plus the mounting option plus uh, the matting option for the artwork. Um, and uh, the reason uh, this is done outside of Plotinary is because uh, we also need the same compositing uh, for our print-ready files. So, um, you know, we actually produce uh, these products and ship it to customers. So uh, the same designs uh, needs, to, uh, needs to be created in the, uh, the print-ready PDFs uh, so we can send it to the printer to be printed. Um, and then lastly, uh, the, uh, our, uh, our secret sauce component also creates uh, the customizable template that, uh, that allows our customer uh, to customize. So some of the artwork uh, are uh, not customizable, meaning they, you, know, you select the colorway um, for the image, and uh, that's pretty much it. But for other uh, artwork, you can choose uh, to edit the text. Um, you can, sometimes you can add photos. Uh, you can manipulate the image assets on the design itself. Um, so this is where uh, the customer is able to do that on our website. Um, and then our rendering engine takes uh, the design templates, um, applied uh, the customer edits, and spit back the preview uh, of, uh, of, their, of their design. Uh, so not, last but not least, uh, we have the job of actually uh, telling um, a product detail page, what image to display uh, on the page. Uh, and because there's so many, we have so many images uh, on, uh, for each uh, of our designs, uh, it is not practical to kind of have a, a, a big database table where you look up uh, which image to, to show. Um, so instead, we have a rule engine on the back end uh, that uh, spits out, um, that generates a list of um, URLs uh, for the images uh, given a product uh, that combined with uh, product metadata is then uh, fed into uh, the indexer, which creates the documents um, that is ready to be ingested uh, by uh, our product details page. Uh, the product detail page then uh, makes a request to our Elasticsearch cluster uh, via GraphQL, um, and that spits back the payload needed to generate the HTML. So uh, zooming in a bit more to uh, the top half of this diagram, um, I can show, I want to show you guys a little more detail on kind of what actually happens uh, within Cloudinary. So this is a base uh, flat composition case uh, for uh, our product image where uh, you have the scene itself, um, you have the shadow and texture for the artwork uh, layer on top, uh, the texture in, is important uh, for the canvas format because uh, the canvas uh, fabric has a texture on top uh, that makes it more realistic. Um, you have the frame that goes around the artwork, and then finally you have the artwork itself uh, that includes the matting uh, and mounting options. So combine all that together, uh, you get the image on the right-hand side uh, that is the, the finished, uh, fully configured product. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, uh, you see an example of the, uh, the name transform CSVs uh, that we upload to uh, Cloudinary that defines um, how these images should be composited together. So uh, there'll be a name that specifies the size and uh, what image it is, um, and then you specify uh, which uh, of the source images to combine together. So this was the simple case. Um, we also have a more complex case that require uh, additional transform, uh, both in 2D and 3D. So uh, for the close-up images, um, there are 
uh, at an angle, and we want to showcase uh, the uh, the details of the design and um, and how uh, they they wrap around uh, the canvas or is framed by uh, by our high quality frames. So on the left hand side, we have the two D close up um, image, uh, and the reason this is two D is because um, the frame covers up the wrap around. Um, so there's no need to create a more complicated 3D model for this. Um, so we use the uh, distort and distort and crop uh, functionality within Cloudinary to uh, create the illusion uh, that the image is uh, uh, at an angle and um, and on within uh, the the frame. So this is fairly straightforward, um, albeit requires a lot of tweaking on. Um, our staff side to get the coordinates exactly right. Uh, on the right hand side, we have the more uh, complex case of a 3D close up. Um, so, this uh, requires um, some work uh, in a 3D modeling software. So, we use uh, an open source software called Blender to do this. Uh, we create the, uh, the 3D uh, canvas object uh, in the software. Um, and then we apply the artwork as a texture uh, onto the object uh, using UV mapping. Um, then the, uh, once, uh, once our image specialist is happy with um, how, the, uh, how the texture maps onto the surface, uh, then we export uh, the object in GLTF format, uh, which is a standard uh, format for 3D models. Um, we zip it up and upload it to Cloudinary, um, and then um, that's it. And then the uh, Cloudinary does the heavy lifting after that. So we specify in our URL um, the uh, the 3D model file we want to use, uh, plus the uh, the design that we want to embed, um, and uh, the magic happens automatically. So. Earlier uh, on the slides, um, I was mentioning that uh, monitoring uh, and visibility into the pipeline has historically been a problem. Um, so we put in some effort to um, create uh, visibility into the Cloudinary platform so that we can uh, we can react when we find problems. Um, so uh, each day we have um, a, a cron job that runs uh, that grabs the error logs from the uh, from the cloudinary servers, uh, combine that with the minted product data, um, and then we dump that into our uh, BI database, uh, Snowflake. Um, from there, we generate um, a Looker dashboard um, that has the noise from uh, bots and other uh, other inputs filtered out. So we focus only on uh, the customer um, transactions. Um, and then we create a dashboard that looks like uh, what you see on the slide right now. So um, the bottom graph shows the amount of uh, broken images uh, on the site uh, per day, kind of experienced by uh, our users, uh, you know, which still happens, but in much lower frequency. Uh, on the top, you have the errors group uh, by, um, the, by our SKUs. So um, the, uh, the merchandising uh, operations team and uh, the engineering team knows um, how to prioritize and triage the issues. Um, so this is kind of all we have uh, with Cloudinary right now. Uh, but as mentioned earlier, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, you know, we'd love to be at a place where uh, all of our production image uh, images are uh, hosted and generated by Cloudinary. Uh, and the most important uh, of the remaining images are our uh, stationary images. So stationary is our biggest category, um, and it is even more complicated than our art uh, assortment. So a single uh, stationary design can have over a million images, um, and, um, and, they, and these images have their own uh, unique challenges uh, to be solved. Um, and the most interesting one to talk about um, is uh, the image on the upper left. Um, so uh, for many of our uh, stationary products, we have a foil die that is pressed onto the design. Um, so when light shines on it, um, you can see 
uh, the uh, the kind of unique reflection that you get from a, you know every premium uh, card. So that shine is really hard to see uh, on a flat image because um, you know you, you want to, you want to be able to see uh, the light moving across uh, the card to be able to see uh, the shine. So uh, so to solve that, we created an animated GIF that highlight that showcase kind of how the um, how the um, the foil will show up uh, under different lights. And currently, that process is very complicated. Um, we have uh, uh, a combination of scripts and hand tweaking and you know, a lot of patience uh, and spreadsheets to uh, make this all work. And we would love to uh, solve uh, this technical challenge with culinary in the future. All right, um, and then on the uh, right hand side, um, there is um, the uh, the PDP options uh, for our stationery. So you can see um, some of the uh, you share some of the similar design with uh, the art SKUs, but it also has things like die cut shapes um, and additional kind of uh, suites that suites of products that goes with uh, a core design um, that presents additional challenges. Um, that is all I have. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my contact information is at the bottom there. Um, and we are hiring. Uh, this is the most important part. Uh, please go on to our job page and browse through uh, the, uh, the open roles there. Um, we'd love to have you join us to solve uh, our unique problems. Thanks very much. Wow, what an absolutely fabulous two days of insights and inspiration this has been. As a professional, there is nothing that gives me more joy than hearing excitement, appreciation, thoughts and ideas from our customers and our community. In the backdrop of the current reality, the entire world is in the midst of taking a turn, probably many turns towards a future we did not quite plan two years ago. Our community is filled with leaders that are paving the way for this new future. And it was refreshing to hear their visions and thoughts. It gave us a glimpse into the possibilities of a digitally forward future, which that will be built with delightful and engaging visual, oral, and virtual experiences powered by technology leaders like Cloudinary. I feel immensely grateful to be part of this community. And I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our customers, users, partners, and the larger community of media champions and experts that participated in our fifth annual ImageCon event to help us spread the gospel of a media-driven future. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all our speakers and attendees. You make ImageCon the magic that it is. As much as we're big believers in the power of the digital experience and enjoyed having uh, engaging with you all virtually, we hope to see you, we really hope to see you all in person next year. So keeping fingers crossed. In fact, the virtual experience will allow us to expand our horizons and augment the physical experience um, as things open up. Uh, we also hope that you have been inspired and challenged by this community of visual media experts and that you're leaving this conference empowered with a long list of ideas you can implement at your organizations. And I'm looking forward to see all of that magic uh, become reality in the next few weeks. And we are excited to offer you on-demand access to all ImageCon sessions uh, so you can watch anything that you uh, missed or you want to revisit, uh, so we'll send you more information on that uh, shortly. Thank you once again uh, for taking the time, valuable time out of your day to share your insights and engage with our speakers and customers. Thank you so much. We hope to see you all next year at ImageCon 2022. Thank you. <laughs>